appealed to Chancery Court of Davidson County for review under a common law writ of Cerciore. So thank you. Um, Any appeal must be filed within 60 days after the entry of a final decision by the board. Any person or other entity considering such an appeal should connect with the attorney to ensure that the time and procedural requirements are met. Thank you. Okay. I will now entertain a motion to accept the minutes of the previous board meeting. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, do we have any public comment to date, Kent? Not that I'm aware of. We did okay. not have any. Okay, we are next on our agenda is the votes for women update. Margaret, are you on? I am on. Hi, Robert. Hi. Hi, Margaret. I don't think I'm giving the update. But... Actually, you you are you are not. This <laughs> is a, to talk, but no, this I'm is not a, the update. <laughs> a finely choreographed presentation, as you can as you can tell here. Um, and I guess in Keith's absence, I will proceed here. Um, well, I'm sorry to interrupt, but real quickly, did everybody see that? Oh, well, May, no, she just sent it to me. Adriana is on. Right. Okay. We. Right. She, you probably can can do can contribute here. Yeah. Uh, she's got her flag up. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> but now I am. I I I can talk and you can see. Okay. Great. Okay. Great. Sorry to interrupt you. Great. Uh, well. Keith and I and Sean, and I'm not seeing Sean on here either today, uh, we had wanted to take a moment to pause to thank uh, Margaret and Julie and Jeannie for bringing the Votes for Women project to us and the fact that we actually have a real room there now. Uh, and it's, uh, even though it's, people are not going through it, we had great things happen in August around that and the programming's being developed and it feels like a real thing, but we just thought it, it was really time for us to pause and and thank thank these these folks for bringing that to us. And I see Jeannie just jumped on as well. Um, so, You're here. Um, yeah, I think we'd all agree that the process is at times has been a little bit grueling and a little bit challenging, but I think the end result that we're that we've arrived at is pretty great. Um, so uh, we should all be proud of it, but none of it would have happened if you folks hadn't uh, taken me into Julie's dining room uh, <laughs> one day in, in, February, in a February and uh, we hadn't had this discussion and, and look at where we are now. So on behalf of the library, uh, I would certainly like to thank you guys for, for bringing this to us. And um, I think, uh, Again, I'm not sure if Sean's on, but I know Tyson's on. Tyson, did you want to jump in here? Um, yeah, gosh. I'd love to hear the story of how it all started and whose living room or what have you. But, gosh, I just think about the votes for women and it being um, just another example of Nashville offering so much more than country music and what's down on Broadway. And um, this is just going to be another staple in the city. And not only a great place for you know residents to visit, but I think you know tourists included. And uh, I think we should all just feel so blessed to have these three you know fabulous women that took an important leadership role. And uh, you know to think about how this went from you know an an idea to a true concept. And Ken, as you said, to actually see like the physical space and uh -huh. you know what it's uh, what what it's doing for the library and what it will do for the city, I think is. Um, just terrific, and I look forward to 2021 when things hopefully open up and people can get get there and experience it. Um, you know, us as residents, I think local universities, different uh, corporate, you know, corporate um, clients or you know corporations will be able to you know participate. I know they've all certainly um, you know were excited and, and celebrated with the grand opening. So. Just to Jeannie and Margaret and Julie, thank you for all of your, you know, I know what was probably really hard work, your dedication and your sincere passion. Um, thanks for making this all just a, a real great success. We couldn't, couldn't be more thankful. So thank you, thank you, thank you. So we are actually, we have a virtual presentation for you. 
and uh, Sean and her team uh, helped put, make this happen and put it together. Uh, I think everybody, or hopefully everybody, is familiar with uh, the uh, the, the uh, gallery display right now of the cartoons surrounding uh, the uh, suffrage movement and the women. And Sean and her team were able to, to put together uh, three items for our, our for our three favorite suffragette, suffragettes, um, and hopefully you can you can kind of see this. This is the uh, the cartoon uh, with the women uh, playing basketball that says "Goal" at the top, and we had this frame for Margaret. That is perfect. <laughs> We thought it was. We yeah, it was. no question about it. <laughs> Thank you. And then uh, the uh, the cartoon with the uh, the Ouija board we had done for Jeannie. So hi, Jeannie, if you're still on there. And um, there. Oh, cool. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm not sure I want the interpretation of why it's appropriate, but I love it. Thank you. <laughs> well, I think the fact that you had the foresight. Is the way it's and I like that. And Julie is here on my phone, uh, and if she were looking at this, she would see Uncle Sam uh, in the petticoat or the dress here. So, and we got that for her. We put that. Thank together. you very much. I, I love it. I'll be, I'm looking forward to seeing it. Great. 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 We will make sure to have those delivered safely to you. Um, and it's more of a concrete remembrance of, of what we've been uh, working on the last couple of years. And I'd certainly invite your comments. Can I start, so, Jamie? Thank you to the library staff and uh, especially to you, Ken, because it seemed to me you said immediately, yes, we would love that when we were around the uh, mm -hmm. table at my house. But I, I just put deep gratitude for our city and our, for our nation. I feel like it's a national treasure already. I yes. do. Indeed. And, and it's, uh, there's no way to thank you all enough. And we um, appreciate it partnering with one of the world's greatest libraries. And um, I, our whole goal was to find a way to maximize the story and the conversations going forward in our city and our country. And I think I think it's something we're all going to be proud of for a really long time. But it it I see Bob Warman's face there. I'll never forget the enthusiasm that he um, it's kept us going mightily from that very first uh, board meeting when we came to the very wise board that said yes. <laughs> so, thank you Kent for letting us um, do this and and um, and sharing your incredible staff and the same of the foundation it's um it's going to be a lot of fun and it's exciting already so yes it is yes it is and uh, I just want to say, uh, Tyson, thank you so much for what you had to say, Kent. Uh, we came to the board in May of 2018 with an idea, uh, which Tyson talked about. And uh, and then Kent told us to do a one-pager. Y'all probably used to that, like bring something to the board that's just a one-pager. One-pager. And, uh, and we worked with the staff and... Uh, and brought that in September of 2018. And you think about what the library has been able to accomplish in two years. Uh, it's it's amazing what the staff has done. And also the board, you all have been with us every step of the way. And in addition to Robert, I wanna particularly thank Katie and Joyce who have attended so many meetings and uh, and thank you so much for the plaque that's in the room uh, about uh, Jeannie and Julie and me. We, we was a complete surprise, and we appreciate that so much. So it's been a great journey, and now we have something permanent. And uh, whereas a lot of things about the 19th Amendment, you know, commemorated and are here for temporarily, but you all have 
put together something that's permanent and will be a great complement to the, the civil rights room too. So we're very excited about working with y'all down the road and uh, thank you, thank you, thank you for letting this happen. Well, thank you. I see Sean's joined us. Sean, we've, we've, all, yeah. we've done the presentation and we've all been making comments. Did you have anything you wanted to say? Yes. First, I apologize for being late on the video. I was listening on audio, but was having technical difficulties getting in. So I did get to hear the presentation and I just want to add my thanks to each of the three of you. I feel like I have learned um, so much from each of you, um, from your passion, um, from your connections, and just from your grit in terms of being able to just get in and make this happen. Um, it You are a true gift to the library, um, to our city, but also I would be remiss if I didn't say a true gift to me. So thank you for your work um, and your friendship. Okay. Well, again, I, I'd like to repeat my thanks and everything that we're doing, and I look forward to even better things ahead than having created a room, but wonderful programming around it. So uh, right. you're, you're welcome to hang on. You're welcome to drop off. Uh, either way is fine. Um, we have actually uh, the staff reports today are going to be pretty great, I think. Um, but... Uh, whichever works for you certainly so thank, thank you. you so much again okay i love it <laughs> we'll get the thank prints you. to you we'll get the prints to you so uh Curbside. okay next on our agenda is the director's report kent take it away okay i will uh so we have a a few things i just a handful of things i wanted to mention to you um, the Southern Festival of Books actually occurred uh, a couple of weeks ago, and it was all virtual. And pieces of it were filmed here at the library. Uh, Tim from uh, Humanities was actually welcoming people from our lobby into the virtual programming on different days. And uh, so Southern Festival did occur, just not the way we're used to it. Uh, and I know they're looking forward to being back in the library next year. Great. Um, it, as you look through your uh, board report this time, you know, it struck me, we always sit on a lot of data in that report and a lot of things but, um, regarding programming. But, you know, one of the numbers that just jumped out at me this month, uh, the delivery team, you know, we're moving items around between branches, trying to get them to curbside and limitless libraries and other places. But um, our team specifically is doing the curbside. And they moved about 375,000 items last year, last month. Just let you let that sink in. 375,000 items were moved between that's, locations. That's really impressive. That's incredibly impressive. Yeah, it's crazy. I mean, if nothing else, it makes me tired just thinking about it. No uh, kidding. But, uh, you know, we've got a great delivery team down there, and I, I don't take them for granted, but we probably don't talk about some of those uh, services that are going on in the background to make the frontline services happen. Uh, but I, I, did, I did want to point that particular item out to you. Um, I don't think I, I've been the beneficiary. I've been the beneficiary of uh, those services. We've got two young kids, a six-year-old, three-year-old. I literally just picked up 15 books last week, and it is really good. <laughs> I, I'll, you know, we'll go to the library when it opens up, but I'll continuously, like, I love ordering books online. It just is really convenient, and um, and our kids love it. So thank you. You're welcome. Um, as far as the property tax referendum uh, that's going on, uh, I think you all know the petition and the uh, ballot issue has been referred to Chancery Court. And uh, if the article in the paper is uh, accurate uh, from a couple of days ago, they're hoping to have a decision on that November 3rd. Uh, in the background, I'm working with Susan and the rest of the administrative staff as we're looking at um, potential budget reductions. We're getting more specific about that as, as we go forward. Um, 
potentially um, if uh, the worst case happens and that does end up going to, uh, looks like it's going to go to the, uh, the ballot, uh, I would uh, entertain the idea of having, going ahead and having a board meeting in November on uh, November 17th as an information session to get the board's feedback on the uh, reductions that we would be uh, considering. Should the I think I think we should, I definitely think we should do that. I mean, we're in a really difficult time right now on so many levels, and that more often we stay updated and on and aware and informed, the better. Okay. Yeah. I agree with Robert on that. I, I agree as well. I wanted to say real quickly that's also I believe Tyson a foundation. If we meet at noon, it's the same day and time um, that the foundation is meeting. Right. Um, Maybe fine. I just. Yeah, it, yeah. So uh, just kind of, we, we certainly won't all be saying, sharing the same room that day. So, <laughs> um, and then uh, I wanted to make sure you were aware that Andrea Fanta was borrowed by the mayor's office to uh, be the mayor's press secretary uh, while the uh, the regular press secretary is out on paternity leave. And I just uh, wanted to mention that just because I think it it points to uh, the great skill set that Andrea has and uh, how, how valuable she is in helping craft our public message along with her MARCOM team. And uh, I've been working with the MARCOM team in her absence and they haven't missed a beat. Uh, they just do a great job. Uh, it, she's, she is excellent. She's one of the best PR people I know. I, I And I've worked with all of them. You know. Well, great. I'm glad you feel that way. She is a huge asset to us. Um, and then um, the last thing I wanted to mention, uh, maybe the most important uh, of the things we've been talking about, or certainly a close uh, second, is that uh, I would like for us to, uh, on November 9th, move forward into one point in our 1.5 phase which is making the computers available um, at a, a handful of locations. Uh, the team feels like that we have the PPE in place and the protocols in place to do it safely. Um, when we look at the Urban Library Council list, uh, of the libraries that have reported about 70 are now allowing um, people into their buildings at some level. And I suspect that number is slightly higher uh, based upon the fact that not everybody is reporting their status. Um, but as a team, we feel like we can move forward and, and, and do it uh, in a safe way. And if, if the surge becomes unmanageable or we find that we have issues, I would certainly recommend coming back from it. But we would like to is go there, can, there be a, can there be a hybrid approach where if there are issues with the computers, can we just have the library open without access to computers in some cases? Well, we're, we wanted to do the 1.5 with the computers because we don't feel at this point that we understand enough about controlling the environment necessarily and turning everybody loose in the building. So we feel like we're providing resources and collections um, through curbside at this time, and the computer piece is the one that people really seem to want to get to that we're hearing most about. Um, I know Keith has been anxious that we move forward with this for several months, and and he was pleased that we were contemplating this. So I think from a public relations perspective, it's probably important that we do that um, mm -hmm. so that to remind the people that we're still here and we're still active and we're still important. Mm -hmm. So yes, I I agree, I agree with Keith. That we should move forward. Okay. Any 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 feedback as far as using like the meeting spaces in your facilities? We we haven't had much feedback, and we've always looked at those in our in our phasing as probably the last things we would open up, just because we can't really social distance people in the way that we probably should at this point. Um, so we kind of see that as the tail end of, of phase two, which would be when we start to open up buildings. Uh, we've been asked a couple of times about it, but I think everybody understands that. Um, so. Got it. Thank you. Um, the rest of the board members, did you have any comments?
Okay. Well, if I don't hear any objections, then we will move forward on November 9th with 1.5. I agree. I thought I hear here. Go for it. Okay. Before, before we let you go, Kent, yesterday was the highest number of people parading in and out of places to vote. It was so incredibly mm -hmm. high. Right. I, that's the day we we voted yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, are you having any other issues like you did on the first couple of days out at, was it Bellevue that you had the issues? It was, we don't seem to have the level of issues. Uh, I've actually been out and of course our security has been out and Susan and Terry and other folks. Um, but everybody seems much more controlled. The fact that we were prepared to snake people through our buildings to begin with. Um, it, you know, we have the recall petition going on, but there doesn't seem to be the frenzy around it. Uh, we had some initial issues with those folks taking over the, the neutral tents. Uh, right. The next day when I was out at Bellevue, I actually saw the uh, Bellevue Democrats and the recall people were sharing the tent. I, I, you know, the, the biggest issue I think with that is that because of they're outside and in that environment, we cannot, we cannot insist that they wear masks. Uh, and they also know that they can uh, cite medical issues. So getting everybody to wear a mask in that tent, I think is the, is the largest thing that we're, we're up against. Uh, but I think it's much better now than it was in July. Uh, I was just so happy to see that, so. Well, isn't there a Metro mask requirement? I mean. In the building. Oh, right in the building. Got yep. it. Yeah. So. Okay, that's just that. I just I just wanted to make sure that everything was going okay because I I heard the Green Hills yesterday. There was like an hour and a half line to get through to to get to vote. Yeah. No, I think I think things are moving well, and I you know I've been t I voted at Bordeaux uh, the second second or third day of voting, and I just hit it right, and I was in and out of the voting area in fifteen minutes. So I just. Oh, yeah, so it just kind of depends on when you hit it and how. Right. I pass by Edmondson Library every day, and it's a line wrapped around the building. So yeah. I went to Casa Azafran yesterday. I went to Casa Azafran, and it took 30 minutes, and there was a line yeah. not all the way around the building, but and that's that's one of the lighter voting sites. You know, right. And that's when I felt like the Green Hills was way backed up. But anyway, I do, I do feel better about it than... Uh, about how we're doing now than, than the last one. So hopefully the general election will go smoothly for the couple of locations we have there too. Everybody will have voted already. <laughs> we'll see. Um, before we leave me, uh, Sean, did you have any other comments? Or Tyson? Okay. Good job on the Wi-Fi upgrade. Oh, thank you. <laughs> We, we still have a few um, tweaks that we need to do probably to our patron uh, rules of uh, conduct. I uh, just that we acknowledge the fact that people may be on, on site uh, after the, the, before and after the building closes. And I'll, be, I'll be bringing you some recommended hours that will have the Wi-Fi open. So. And I would like to just add um, for the board, we are um, full um, full throttle on our gala and um, public lecture preparation. Uh, would love for all of you to participate in one or both of those. This year, because of the pandemic, we are not doing um, bringing in one author. Um, instead, we are using both the public lecture and the gala just to highlight the um, transformational work of the library. We have um, several local authors who are gonna be introducing um, some of our library patrons. Um, and those library patrons will be telling their library story um, about how the National Public Library has helped them in whatever, um, kind of their walk of life is. Um, and then for the gala, it will be um, also hearing from, um, hearing library stories. And we have um, um, Dirk's
Bentley, um, Ketch Shakur, and Manit Chahan are our MCs for the two different events. Um, it is going to be exciting, and I think just a way really for us to lift up and showcase um, the great work that the library is doing, even in the midst of the pandemic. Um, the public lecture is free. It's on November 14th um, at 10 a.m. And the gala is a ticketed event, also November 14th, but it is the evening. I'm happy to give more information for any of you, but we would love for you as board members, even to spread the word, um, in terms of just being able to get um, people to understand the value um, of the library and the impact it's having on our community. Can it be Zoom instead of WebEx? <laughs> uh, it will not be WebEx, Robert. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, although you all have really mastered this. I was waiting at the beginning of this meeting for the, can you hear me? Can you hear me? And you all like have it down to a science. <laughs> And I just received word, Kate is on audio somewhere. Uh, she may be an attendee, I don't know. Well, she would be an attendee. Uh, so Kate is out there somewhere. Okay, uh, staff reports I think are next, Kent, right? All right, this is kind of the uh, Elise show today and I'll let her take her presentations in whichever order she'd, oh, we, we, excuse me, we did skip over the uh, the board meeting dates. We don't have to approve that. Uh, can, can, yes. can I, can I, I'm sorry. Uh, can I go back to the Wi-Fi? And uh, I, I know this is the tricky part of me. Sure. Uh, so the branches that, that is pending Metro Council approval. Actually, those have been approved, and I should have taken that off there before I sent it. Okay, just wanted to make sure. Perfect. Sure, it's, it's fine. Uh, actually, there were two different grants there, and at the time that list came out, it was pending, but it has been approved. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, and the other thing I should have done is just bring your attention to the board meeting dates on page five. Okay, let's see. Okay, do we need a motion to approve those or are you? Uh, I do not believe so. They're just an item of information. Okay, so, great. Of course, we're hoping that those this maybe begin uh, in person at some point, but that is the projected locations. So. And you don't have that November on there. I uh, know. No, we don't. We don't. And I would say that we try and, if possible, I hate to conflict with the uh, the yeah. uh, the NPLF okay. uh, board meeting. Right. I, you know, if we can stay with the seventeenth. I'm hopeful that we won't have to use it or we won't have too much to give you, but we uh, we may want to go ahead and pencil it in on our calendars. Yeah, better safe than sorry. Okay, Tuesday the 17th? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. And Keith is listening to us as well. I've just seen, I've got a text from him, so. Okay, I got it on my calendar. Okay. <laughs> Kent, can you hear me? I can. Kent. Well, does it make sense to even schedule those two things at the same time? Why don't we do one or the other one at 11 or? Um, uh, either way is fine. There's another meeting that morning uh, that's, that's foundation related. So we can't right. miss the morning. I, we could do a doodle poll. Um, the biggest issue is just finding a date there as we get close to the holidays. Yeah, can, we are, um, because we have the morning diversity, equity, inclusion training from 1030 to, or 10 to 1130, we have shortened our board meeting just from 12 to one. So I don't know if, if one o'clock would be an option for your board. Okay. Well, what, why don't we, uh, we'll do a doodle poll around that date and see what we come up with if, if you guys would prefer that. Okay. Let's, that's a good, yeah, that's a if good. If we, if we, if, if there's I a need, I meet, we need not, to all. Yeah. 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 Okay. Great. Okay. okay. Uh, so now staff reports. Yes, now staff reports. Okay, well, Elise has a, a great lineup here, and I'm going to turn it over to her, to her in a minute. However, 
Um, I just want you to know that uh, Elise has turned in her uh, retirement yeah. date for December 4th. So as of December 4th, we are going to lose Elise Adler, who is invaluable to what we do on a daily basis. So uh, I think she's worked at the library like 99 years. Is that right, Elise? Yes, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> that's correct. Oh, that's leave us. How can you leave us? How can 42 years old, and she has worked at dog years, and it's, I'm telling you, it's it's a huge loss. It will be a it's huge, huge loss. loss. So, yeah. don't leave us. Yeah, but I, <laughs> I, thought, I thought we would let her uh, have the stage here uh, for a good part of this board meeting, and kind of highlights some of the great work that's going on in areas that report to her. So, Elise, take it away. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, the, I'm going to do uh, three brief presentations. I'm going to change. If you're looking at the agenda, I'm going to start with NASA and then do the support for the schools and students, and then we'll do the survey. So, um, Kent and Sean, I know you attended, and, and Katie, and if Keith is listening, um, this does not get past me about celebrating NASA, and I remember very well our drive to the mayor's office where I was saying, yeah, let's not do that. <laughs> and then on the drive back saying, this is going to be the greatest thing ever. So um, it has been the greatest thing ever, and they had their 10th anniversary and just um, as an overview over those 10 years, they directly served 15, over 15,000 kids and had just over 20 partners, many of whom stayed on board as partners for those 10 years, which I think speaks a lot to the system. So because it's the times in which we're in, there was a, a virtual celebration and I think also, that NASA speaks to the very fabric of what goes on in this city. They had a tremendous turnout. I think there were just over 160 people in attendance on Zoom. So I thought that was great. Um, as I mentioned, Kent was there, Sean was there. We had 14 electeds, elected officials, Congressman Cooper, Mayor Cooper. We had um, 10 council members, four board members, a lot of the out-of-school time programs nationally who really are older than we are but now look to Nashville as a model were present. New York City, Boston, Rhode Island, those are the ones I saw. So it was really uh, very well attended. And just over the last years and really over the last five years, it's all been restructured. And this is not something that necessarily you need, you would know. But when Anna came on board, there were five zones and it really happened the way it needed to happen. But after a certain number of years, in order to create the best efficiency and be as effective as we could be for the students, it was restructured from a zone, from five zones to one system. Um, and I, I won't go into that. We can talk about details if you have questions. And maybe the most important thing over the last year and a half was that um, there was a vision for holistic youth development that was created. And basically what that is is a citywide framework around the skills and the assets that support young people. And Vanderbilt was hired to work with the community to create this framework, and they did a spectacular job. They talked to over 250 people in the city, and this included the youth, most importantly, I think, their families. We had direct service workers. We had business and city and government leaders. We had folks from the schools and, and the parents. So there was a really broad representation of folks that spoke to what we need to provide for the kids in this city for them to thrive and to grow up successfully. So looking for the future or to the future now, we have this opportunity to train 
not just the NASA partners, but anyone who works with youth has the opportunity for free to take part in, in the training and to understand how to embed this vision and the best practices in their work serving youth. So I think as we move forward and into the next decade, um, hopefully, you know, the goal is to is to just see more and more kids graduate, more and more kids become successful in their school and their work and their life. So that's that. Any questions about NASA? I watched the video and it was tremendous. Yeah. For you too. Was, yeah. Um, Thank you. I thought it was great too. And that was uh, our production services team and, and NASA did such a great job um, getting that together and the kids were so fantastic. You're fine, Katie? Okay. Hi. Yeah. Okay. So um, I'm going to move to, we had so many questions or I was hearing so many questions from folks from, from this board, from the foundation board and just people out and about uh, for how the library is supporting Metro uh, National Public School students. And we're doing an awful lot. What I'm going to do is I'm going to give you the briefest summary, and then I'm going to email all of you. There's about a four-page document of all the things we're doing, because different areas of service are providing different opportunities for schools. So, But I'm just going to give you um, a summary right now. So right now, what I'm going to talk to you about, there are all virtual platforms, and there are many different platforms. But virtually, we're providing all different kinds of professional development and training. And we're doing that for mostly for teachers and librarians. We're doing it for youth workers, so out of school time, for the families of students. We are providing story times. We do that, and I'll talk a little bit about NPL Universe, but we're also doing it for particular classrooms who request it. We have filmed our puppet shows, so classrooms can also request the puppet show. And even though the show is filmed, our staff gets on live with students so they can answer questions. We have what are called playlists, so our studio area has all kinds of STEAM programming, and they're anywhere from five to 15 minutes, and there's a whole playlist of them. And these are available to the students. It's also available to their teachers. And then Be Well has all kinds of health, nutritional, mental, and physical health. Um, there's a huge issue in terms of, not surprisingly, stress right now, and we know that chronic absenteeism in regular times, and it's really not that different in the virtual universe, but um, stress has a lot to do with whether you're able to participate or not. And so we're providing playlists in those areas. We also have a really thriving digital inclusion playlist. And these are videos on how to access resources, whether you're using your phone or your tablet or your laptop, however you can do it. We also have virtual field trips, so people can still come to the library. We're uh, studios doing that for um, the high school students. Uh, Digital Inclusion is doing it, um, and, and Maine staff might be doing it, I think. Adult Literacy is also doing it. Then we have a lot pertaining to digital safety and security. And this is huge, and we might take it for granted for those of us who have been online for quite some time, but a lot of families in the school system, this is their first time really in a virtual environment. So we have a lot of information for them about how do you keep yourself safe? How do you keep your children safe? And how do you keep things secure? We also have, we're pushing out telehealth, again, because health and, and absenteeism have everything to do with each other and people are not wanting to go to the doctor's offices. And if any of you have done a telehealth visit, it can be really easy or it can be a little bit complicated. So we're working on that as well. Both collection development and limitless libraries have reallocated resources so that we can purchase more electronic books. 
So if any of you, and I hope you have, and if you haven't, go ahead and get onto um, our website. So we're calling it now, you know, NPL Universe. And there is tons, there's thousands of programs there. Some of that, school is using Schoology. So some of the programs they can access through Schoology and we can put on the Schoology website. But most or many of our staff have become stars of stage and screen and they're filming themselves doing story times or trainings or teaching people how to use resources. Um, so main staff, branch staff, education and literacy, and it's all being produced by production services. And again, there are thousands with hundreds of thousands of views and that's all available for the schools. Um, book a librarian, I think this lives at Maine, but the librarians all across the city. So you can, we can, the staff can answer one-on-one. -on -one. So Robert, if you have a particular question and it's about your health or it's about resources or it's about whatever it is, you can either come to us online or you can call and you can actually have somebody, if a specialist is needed on digital inclusion, help you trained and they can just work with you one-on-one. -on -one. Concierge service, um, we provide custom collection lists for students, for teachers. We can do it by grade or subject or genre. Um, Margaret, uh, Jeannie and Julie, if you're still on, Special Collections are offering lesson plans for teachers and students all around the women's suffrage and our exhibit and collections. And behind the scenes, Lee, I think you're out there. I know that there's a lot of stuff going on in collection and technology, some of which I've mentioned but also, you know, the expanded Wi-Fi outside of the branches, really to help people get access to Wi-Fi and the internet. And then making materials more accessible to the students of MNPS. And they do that by offering uh, custom reports and ongoing system support. And then not online, you know that we're doing curbside, but we're also, our staff, um, they're going to the schools. So I think it's once a week at different schools. They have school staff and also volunteers who come and families basically do drive-bys. And if they're having trouble with the technology or they need help with anything, they can come to the school. Usually it's tech related. And our staff is going to the schools and volunteering to help those families as well. So um, it matters that the relationship we have with MNPS is very important to us. And I think that's evidenced by the you know, intentionality of what we do and, and how concerned we are. And as I mentioned, there's four pages of this and I'll send it to you after this. Great. Look, look there forward to this. Yes. <clears throat> really look forward to um, getting that report from you. Have you all thought about teaming up with organizations like Urban League or um, Girl Scouts or any of the nonprofit organizations in the city to get, get the word out to them as well? No, but that's a really great idea. Some of them, you know, we are, um, we're with Alignment Nashville, which Works yeah. with the schools and We're some of those folks, you know, we see them at the alignment meetings, which we are all still attending. But I think it's a really great idea to maybe just because we do have relationships with all of those groups and we can we can reach out specifically. I think that's a great, great idea, Travis. Thank you. I probably have somebody from Urban League contact you. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> Was there anything else? All right. Um, I have a, a PowerPoint here that we beautifully put together. So, um, Bernadette, if you want to just put on that first screen, um, all of you know that with education and literacy, we're always looking at um, outcome based evaluation. We always want to know that we are successful. And we've been doing that forever. What we thought at the time when we were sheltering at home and really pivoting quickly to provide services online, you know, at some point we wanted to, we needed to know from the public who are using us if we're meeting the needs. We, we needed, we knew we needed to have a very short survey. Um, so we got together and we did it. And just a few questions 
And then a few demographic questions because we want to know the broad reach, who's answering this, who's, you know, who's being responsive. So, so this is our general survey. Bernie, if you want to go to the first screen. It was really important, I think, to get a justified survey. We needed at least a thousand questions. We had no, I mean, a th yeah, a thousand responses. Not a thousand questions, but a thousand responses. And of course, we have no idea how long that might take. Well, people want to have a voice. People are paying attention and visiting their library. And we got 1,288 total responses within two weeks. So I think that in and of itself is telling us something. So we did it two ways. We had it online, so on the website, and also on the marketing September newsletter. So if you could, um, if you saw it online, you could answer it that way. We also started it after curbside began. So we were able to give printed surveys to people because it was important if they don't come to us virtually, then we also wanted to have, we wanted to offer them an opportunity to, to give us some feedback. Um, and in that case, they could return it in their books to the library and those pieces of paper were quarantined just like the books where they could mail them in. They could take pictures. You can see that we got 279 people took pictures and of the survey filled out and emailed them back to us. But we got, and then there was one survey that was snail mail. I thought that was interesting too. I still send mail, but apparently I am in the minority. So, but we did get um, 1,288 total responses and we were thrilled. One, one mailed in would probably be me. I also mail people things. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I will say, because we had a lot of conversation around whether we were gonna ask for you know, open-ended questions. And if any of you had done surveys, that's a really labor intensive exercise and it's hard to analyze as well. So we thought we would do it this way first. And then depending on if there were any critical issues we need to address, we would go to plan B for the next survey. Um, as it turned out, we got um, a lot of notes of appreciation and suggestions. They wrote it in anyway. And I'll talk about that at the end. But Bernie, we can go to the first, uh, the next screen. So this was the big question. So you had to answer the library is currently meeting my needs and it's a light that you can see at the bottom. So I strongly agree to, I strongly disagree. So I think we were all absolutely thrilled that 78% agree or strongly agree. That's so important to us. There were 12% that said disagree or strongly disagree. Now for the people that responded, um, that put in a suggestion or a comment, a lot of them said, we just want to come in the building. We just want to browse those shelves in the building. And then some of them clarified when it's safe. So that was the biggest comment, I think, related to the disagree or strongly disagree. But for 78% to say um, that their needs are being met, I consider that a huge win. And then, Bernie, we can go to the next one which this was really, you know, we have said, we think virtual is here to stay. Well, yes, apparently it is. So 75% when we asked how we access the library in the future, and it was online, you know, online and virtually or at a specific location, 75% said both. And I think this goes with the trend of, of collections as well. I mean, so many people, everybody was reading books, now people are reading the physical copies and they're downloading, you know, and they're doing e-media. And so they don't necessarily stop one way, they just add. And I think that's what's gonna happen, obviously with our programming as well. People will still come in our buildings when they can and they're gonna watch us virtually, which means that we are gonna need to step up the games as we start opening and we'll have to do both. So the next screen, so those were the two major questions. These were all demographics. So we wanted to know your zip code and the size of the number um, represents that we had more um, responses from those different locations, but we got responses from all the zip codes you see. So we feel like we had a pretty broad 
representation. Bernie next. And then we asked the age group. And I, I think this is great. So, so between the ages of 35 and, and 75 or older, I think we did pretty well. I think what we wanna look at next time is that 12 to 24 year olds, like how do we get more people of that in that age? Don't steal their library card when they graduate from high school. <laughs> I note that. Duly noted in the notes. Okay. All right. And then on the record. <laughs> okay. And then um, the next screen, which is about race. And this is the this is the one that I think when we do another survey, it's interesting to me that we had so many different zip codes. We had all of these different age groups, yet when we're looking at this screen, most of the people are, you know, identify as white. And I, you know, I think what that says is that we need to promote this differently. We need to, get, we need to do something different in order to get a broader, uh, in order to get a more diverse response. That's why I mentioned uh, teaming up with nonprofits. Well, yeah. The other thing to bear in mind here that this is only of the of the twelve hundred people that responded that yes. might not reflect the reality of what's happening. It's just who responded. Yes, and and yes. I would add, not just nonprofits. I hate. I know this is a library, but churches, because people have come into the churches. It's hard to do it now because we're virtual, doing virtual um, uh, services, but. You know, there's a lot of times you can do announcements. People will let you on stages uh, during an announcement time. And then after service is over, you can sign up people in the vestibule. Maybe we'll do something after COVID like that. No, I think those are all great ideas and things that we need to consider. And then the last screen, I just wanted to, um, this is so lovely. These are some of the patron comments. Um, I miss being in my beloved Bellevue branch, <laughs> which, you know, people, I mean, it's just the sweetest thing. And the library is amazing and curbside is wonderful and you're going above and beyond. And then I just wanted to end with librarians or angels, which I just think, you know, I don't know. That's the sweetest thing I've seen in a while. So I, I think that the moral of that story is we did this survey. I think for the most part, it's, it's, really positive and I certainly feel that Kent and Sean and all of you when you're out and about and people you know are saying look you know your doors have not been open but you can really feel we can all feel confident that we are still working hard to serve the community we are from all and you know what we hear we're being successful doing it and when we pivoted we did the right thing and it doesn't mean we'll rest on our laurels and we'll keep moving forward with different ideas, many of which you have said today, but I think that we can feel really good about the results of this survey. I like to comment you have made quarantine life better. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So what I'm going to do, um, I also have some summaries of education and literacy, and as, uh, as I'm transitioning out of the library, um, I've done this actually for some years, but all of my folks, we have summaries, like so you know what the service is, and then the, some highlights for outcome measurements and a timeline of, some of you on the foundation might have seen some of these presentations from staff, but it's all, it's all in a document. So I'm gonna send you the MNPS detailed uh, support document, and I'm gonna send you uh, fiscal year 20 education and literacy summaries, just so you can have that. You don't have to do anything with any of it. You'll just have it and can refer to it if you need it. Great. Thank you, Elise. Hey, Elise. Yeah. Elise, can I ask one question? This is Kate. Um, I'm not looking at the visuals, obviously. Um, did you, were you able to break down the 1,200 respondees by branch or by zip code? 
Yes. Yes, because yes. Okay. Yeah. So yes, we did. And if you saw the visual, right. so the, the zip codes were actually different sizes on the screen, just visually, so you could see okay. where we got the most. I think Edmondson Pike, Hermitage, Green Hills, Bellevue um, were the big ones. Yeah. But yes, we can do a report like that too. And you know, a lot of them were the curbside. I mean, definitely people from different zip codes are going to other branches. But, you know, if I'm guessing and I haven't seen that detailed report, I would say that probably the people who are doing curbside are in that neighborhood. Okay. Although there was a really broad swath of zip codes. So you see people are doing Like lots and lots of That's great. Any other comments or yeah, questions? Yeah, that's great. Any other comments or questions for Elise? Robert, we, we found out Keith was has been on uh, the meeting and we tried to unmute his microphone. Keith, are you out there? Uh, I'm here. Can you hear me? We yes. Can. Hey. Hey. I'm sorry. I just Hello. kept trying to get on and it, the password just never, I couldn't get on. I'm sorry. <laughs> I had the same problem, Keith. That's why I'm listening. <laughs> Oh. It's, it's difficult. Everybody else, okay? everybody else got on okay? Well, I hate this program and it took me forever, but yeah, I got on. Me too. I had to. It seems Here. like my system down wants to download WebEx every time I get on. Right. Yeah. Right. And, and I already and have it on my that, system, but it was hard. And and Joyce, if you don't if you if you let leave it on, it tries to take over every time you try to use any other. Um, exactly, as soon yeah, as you that's what mine does too. Up. Webex yeah. pops yeah. up. Yeah. Yes, we hate, so you it. Have we to, hate it. That's yeah, that's what I did. I deleted it, and that's why I'm done. Anyway, never mind. But <laughs> uh, well, we have Larry doing ours now, and we have we have uh, in-house help, so. Uh, we can maybe have him send a cheat sheet or something to you guys to avoid that. Because I've been in that loop too. And if you don't click just right, you get stuck. So Okay. Uh new business, Kent. Okay, this is uh Susan. Susan, are you still here? I am. Can you hear me? We can. All right. Ernie, can you bring up the resolution? Oh, uh, yeah. All right, just to get us started, um, some of you were not on the board, but um, back in October of 2018, um, MPL, prior to October of 2018, MPL would bring to the board an annual resolution for the closing the library system on holidays. And Metro's um, holiday schedules are based on employees that work a Monday through Friday schedule. Obviously, the library system in some instances is open seven days a week. So in October of 2018, we brought to the board a schedule for the next year, but then added that we wanted this to be done in perpetuity so that we wouldn't have to come back annually and ask for this to be done. Um, and the board approved it. Um, the problem was we were not thinking about when Christmas Day falls on a Saturday. So this resolution, in December of 2021, Christmas Day is going to fall on a Saturday. So following Metro's schedule, the library would be closed Friday um, the 24th for Christmas Eve. We would be closed Saturday the 25th because it is Christmas Day. And then Monday we would be closed because that is when Metro would observe it because the holiday falls on a Saturday. Um, so we are requesting in this resolution that when a 
Christmas Day falls on a Saturday, that we also close Sunday the 26th. If not, um, we would be closed Monday, Saturday, or Friday, Saturday, and Monday. We would have to open Sunday for three and a half hours and only at some locations. So we are requesting that as of December 20, uh, 2021 and any holiday or Christmas holiday that falls on a Saturday thereafter that we also close on that Sunday. So this is for 2021 and, and, and in perpetuity thereafter. For any time Christmas day would fall on a Saturday. Yes. Right. Yes. I understand. Can I have a motion to that effect? So moved. Second. Second. From Okay, all those in, in, in favor of adopting this for 2021 and all years after that, when Christmas falls on a Saturday, please say aye. Absolutely. Uh, aye. 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 Okay, motion approved. Thank y'all very much. Cool. Any other new business? Keith, did Keith have anything to throw in since he was silenced for much of the meeting? <laughs> no. Uh, sorry. I'm sorry, I just couldn't get on. Uh, no, that's fine. And I, I apologize. I, I don't check my phone very quickly. No, I didn't. We um, we did something about both for women uh, uh, earlier before I. Yes. I, I couldn't. On it we made a present. We made a presentation to them of framed cartoons uh, from the exhibit. Uh, to yeah. thank them for their uh, yeah. launching this for us. Right. And she and uh, Margaret were on to accept. Okay. Yeah, I couldn't, I, I missed about the first 15 minutes. I, I didn't even hear the first 15 minutes or so, 15, 20 minutes, something like that. There's got to be a better system than this WebEx thing. <laughs> We all need it. This is my own new business. Yeah. Oh, wow. Book, oh, oh, your oh, book. Robert, this, is it out right now? No, it comes out the week after the election. <laughs> okay, and we can get it in, in, uh, course. When, when we will all need an, a nice update. <laughs> <laughs> so where will we meet you to get signed copies? Yeah. <laughs> oh. I think that Margaret Bim wants Dolly and I to do something with the votes for women. I don't know what she's got planned, but oh, something. Oh, great idea. I heard that this morning. Will that be before Christmas? I, think I hope so. Anyway, well, that's, that's, my first, that's my first advanced copy, and we got our first reviews uh, in Kirkus and uh, Country Living and Atlantic Monthly, I think, ran something. That is great. Well, I can't wait to buy many copies and give them away as Christmas gifts. But I, it's a beautiful. It's a gorgeous book. It's a really gorgeous book. Well, when you first told the board just in about this, I, I guess a year ago when we were just chatting before a meeting, I thought the dad burn thing was going to kill you. So I'm thrilled to see that we're on the other end of it, and it's something that you're happy with. It was the hardest book I've ever done, but it was worth it. Yeah. So, so do we get it through you? No, <laughs> but a lot of gift shops are going to carry it. <laughs> I'm sure Parnassus will have it, and I'm sure um, well, I'm sure all the bookstores in town will. Yeah, that little that little gift shop on Whitebridge Road said they were carrying it. The one that's in that uh, gift frame, tree. the gift tree next to uh, Beveled Edge. Yeah, that one. They're they're carrying it. I know. Um, okay. But yeah, it'll be Great. it'll be. Chronicle's very good about marketing stuff, so I, I expect you'll see it around. But anyway, that's my news. Good. Uh, can I have a motion to adjourn? I'll moved. Since Keith had right, got second. the entire meeting, should he make the motion? And we'll, we'll, be, we'll be looking yeah, for the doodle uh, poll. We'll be looking for the doodle poll for our November meeting time. Right. Put that out. Okay. okay. Thank you, everyone. Stay safe and watch the debate. Yep.
Congratulations. You don't, want to, live in my, you don't want to live in my neighborhood right now. There are eight foot fencings going up everywhere. Wow. <laughs> oh, we feel safe over here. <laughs> I'm one block, I'm one block Listen, away. Not only can you get can't get in, we can't get out. <laughs> <laughs> This has been a service of the Metro National Network. If you would like to see this presentation again, or for more information about this and other programs, visit nashville.gov.